What's one of the first wildflowers to emerge after winter? Violets. So grab your brush, grab your violet shirt, uh, close enough, and let's paint some violets. Just these four colors for this painting. And a couple flat brushes, and of course a rigger brush for details. I'm going to start out and just mark the yellow centers of each flower. Now clean water. And just a very light violet wash to start out. One of the things I love most about watercolor is that it's translucent paint. So it also allows us to paint a uh, translucent effect uh, for the flowers themselves. And one of the ways we can start to paint a translucent effect with watercolor is by leaving the center of the petal be the lightest part and darkening the edges of the petal as well as toward the center of the flower clean water here to dilute or soften any of the hard edges. Here's my reference photo again. You can see there's no dramatic light effect going on here, but I'm just doing my best to exaggerate it. Starting off the next flower here with some clean water to help the paint do the work for you. And the last flower. They say three flowers are better than two. I don't know who says that, but that's what they say. And again, trying to leave the center of the petal be the lightest part so that it's catching the light.
Okay, and now a light wash of green here for the leaves. So I'm going around the stems because I'd like to make those stems stand out a little more and catch some light. I just want to mention that for this presentation, I'm using a standard watercolor practice pad, which isn't really the best type of paper to use when trying to create a, a finished painting. Uh, using a paper such as an Arches 100% cotton rough paper is a great go-to option. Well, for this demonstration, in terms of direction of light, I wasn't really concentrating on light coming in from the right or left so much as just the light shining down from above. And the shadows are really being caused by the, the petals casting a shadow onto the leaves. Here's an interesting little technique. Uh, using a palette knife or an old credit card or any kind of rough edge um, could be used to create some pretty interesting textures and leaves as well uh, when the paper is slightly wet. Now here I'm trying to go through and create the effect of veins in the leaf. Okay, at this part of the painting, I'm starting to work on some of the details. If you notice from the reference photo, there's these little lines, these fine lines toward the center of the flower, and that's what I'm working on right now using my trusty rigger brush. At this stage, it's really easy to overbrush, but just do your best to leave well enough alone. I know it's easier said than done. I've ruined plenty of paintings, and I'm sure I'll ruin plenty more. I'd like to keep the stems light, so I'm putting in a very light wash of Rostiana and Hooker's Green. Now to keep these guys from floating in space, I'm going to add a little shadow to ground these beauties. Well folks, I think that's going to wrap it up. Happy gardening and happy painting to all. For more tutorials, please like and subscribe.